Hey everybody, welcome back to MacBooks 2007. Today we're going to be talking about book four in the Percy Jackson series, Battle of the Labyrinth. Let's get started. After Percy's adventure to try to save Artemis from Atlas on Mount Onyx, he's decided to try to live a normal life, for a demigod that is. His stepdad, Paul Blowfish, has let him attend a school for people with problems, ADHD, dyslexia. Conveniently, two Karapoi, or vampires, had to attend school on that very day, managed to blow up the school. And you guessed it, it was all blamed on Percy. He and Annabeth just managed to escape with the help of a mortal girl named Elizabeth Dare, who can see through the mist. After racing the camp Half-Blood, they find out that everyone has been preparing for war against Kronos and his forces. A new director named Quintus has arrived, and he's helping Chiron out with the activities. He seems kind of shady, though. After playing war games with killing each monster, he and Annabeth discover a secret tunnel that leads all the way down to the labyrinth. The one made by Dallas. She's given a quest with Grover, Tyson, and Percy. Percy has dreams of Nico turning evil from the influence of the ghost king Minos. The group travel throughout the labyrinth, looking for Dallas's workshop that has all the answers to defeat Cronus. They encounter monsters at every turn, including the Sphinx, who gives them riddles from the internet and uses a fax machine to check their answers, a massive spider who loves basketball and has serious digestion problems, and Gerard, a guy who can never play softball because he has literally three bodies all mixed in with each other. They turn Nico to the good side after resurrecting Bianca from the dead and continue on their way. Grover and Tyson split up and try to find the great god Pan, who can help them in defeating Cronus. Percy and Annabeth do a favor for Hephaestus, and they manage to help him by going to an island. Now this island is really creepy, and Percy finds out some evil secrets about Cronus. He blows up the island, but is blasted out into the air to the island Calliope, who turns out to love him. For some reason, I do not know why. As he sails back to the camp, Half-Blood, he finds out that everyone thinks he was dead. He and Annabeth recruit Dare to take him through the labyrinth. After finding Daedalus and Pan, the group arrives at a camp Half-Blood, just in time for the battle to start. They manage to kill off the rest of the monsters, and Quintus, who turns out to be Daedalus, destroys himself, which destroys the labyrinth in the process, killing most of Cronus' forces. Cronus had taken full control of Luke, and they was using him as a host. It was too late, because Luke was already dead. This book was different from the other ones. I mean, in a good way, that is. Honestly, I really liked the, the maze aspect of it, with all the twists and turns. I thought it was really cool. The only thing I didn't like, and kind of bothered me, was the fact that the cover didn't accurately describe any part in the book. Now, there was a giant fire giant, that's Hyperion, who was in the next book, but other than that, I thought the book was great. Anyways, thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time on MacBooks 2007.